Well, we have an exciting event coming up, Creative Vision. Tell everyone, what is Creative Vision? Well, Norma, I see Creative Vision as a way to bring the community together around the visual arts. We used to call it Double Vision, and the intent was to display the artwork of both a photographer and an artist around a common visual theme or entity. Uh, the photographer took the picture and the artist would create their vision of the picture. Sometimes it can be hard to tell which, which is the photograph and which is the painting or the drawing, but it's a fun event. I know I've been to it every single year and it is amazing the talent that we have here in Sun City. But why was the name changed from Double Vision to Creative Vision? Well, we found that many times the interpretation of the event was for the artist to exactly mimic the work of the photographer. And that was never really the intent. The intent has, has been for both photographers and artists to be creative in their approaches. That means that the two, the photograph and the painting, can be entirely different. But one's an interpretation of the other in some ways. It opens the door of creativity more for the participants and it makes the show more interesting for all of us. Judy, you're the photographer, Nancy's the artist. What was the process in getting the photo you selected? Well, Norma, I had these foxes that were in my backyard, and I was watching them. But foxes are very shy creatures, so to be there when they were there and to have a camera just was impossible. So one day I actually watched the movement of this one grown-up fox walking through the yards and timed it. And that next day I went out with my camera and my dog, who didn't care about the fox, and waited and then got ready to take a picture. and the most beautiful thing, because I'm a novice photographer, was we locked eyes. And so my painting's really all about the eyes. And the, the fox looked at me and was deciding, are you a tree? Are you something I should be afraid of? And we had that one moment and then it took off. Wow, okay. So the foxes are shy, huh? Well, I'm a little shy around foxes too. <laughs> <laughs> and Nancy, what was your thought process in the painting of this photo? Well, I, when we chose the photo, I, the fox just made me smile. It just, the, you, you look at the photo and it just uh, captured your attention. Um, I knew that we have the ability to be as creative and add something if you want, or um, just be a little more diverse than what you might normally do. But all year I wait for a great photo. I'm not a great photographer and I love working from a really good photo so I was really excited to capture that little face that made me smile. I love the colors. I just felt like I would really enjoy getting that green in there. There's a little pink in the fox ears that kind of matches the pink that's in the wall and I just really wanted to go after those colors and that face and the eyes that really were surprised as they lacked in with our human. Yeah. Well, great selection process. Did you ever think of using another photo or when you saw that photo, that was it? The fox kept coming up and coming up and we would end up talking about the face and the eyes and the element of surprise. Mm -hmm. And I think both of us just were drawn to that photo more than others. Well, welcome Nancy and Tom to Sun City News. Well, Nancy, you get the first question. You're the artist. So what was the process for choosing Tom's photo? Uh, Tom had wonderful photos to choose from. Uh, we narrowed it down to about six photos um, and then decided on the one photo, um, I think because of the, the color and the subject matter. So, um, that was our process. Okay. And Tom, what did you want to convey through your photo? Uh, my photo is an example of what we call street photography, in which a photographer goes out with his camera uh, and attempts to capture little bits of life of people un unscripted, unplanned, but just see what he can see. So mine is a picture of the, uh, a busker or a street musician in Charleston, South Carolina, and the thing that uh, attracted me about it was this beautiful violin, this red-orange colored violin that he was playing. So I took a picture of him and uh, put a few bucks in his, uh, <laughs> his coffee can, and, uh, and then when I got home and looked at the picture, I discovered that it's, I think, something really special, and it's, uh, it's an, it contains a, a little slice of life 
but also some interesting contrasts. Great. Well, Nancy, how did you visualize your creative vision of Tom's photo? Well, uh, for me, when I saw the color um, of the violin as well and the hands, um, I, I love working with hands in a, um, a photo or in a painting, um, and, and I saw the emotion um, of the, that street busker playing and to me his eyes were closed and everything about him said he was so caught up in that music and that's what I wanted to capture. Okay. And Tom and Nancy, either one of you, how did you collaborate during this whole process? Um, you know, we, we met several times and, and uh, during the process while I was editing my picture and while Nancy was preparing her uh, painting and and we there was feedback it was back and forth and suggestions made and uh, so we we really worked together on it and i think that the products benefited greatly from this collaboration so i'm thinking you're very happy with the outcome oh, very happy with the outcome yeah, and I, and uh, my um, painting is done on a 78 record um, and uh, just capturing that piece was very different so it, it was exciting for me to try to paint on a different surface, so I was happy. I'm here with Linda Laird, and Linda is the publicity director for Creative Visions. And we pretty much know what Creative Visions is, and used to be called Double Vision. Right. But tell us about tonight. Well, tonight, right now, is a special event just for the artists and for the um, photographers. And it is to celebrate what we've done. And this is probably the ninth or tenth time that we've put an exhibit like this on. And each year, they're all invited to participate, and I think because of COVID, I think there were just fewer this year. But it's a great turnout, and we are very excited. We want everybody to come. It's an opportunity for you to buy, like, one of the paintings or one of the photographs for your home because they're all framed, ready to be hung. And we're just very lucky to be here. We have lots of people who have worked on this project, and we've tried to get the word out, and I think it's been successful. I think so, just from the looks of, 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 of the people behind me milling mm -hmm. about. And how many entries do you have this year? Linda? This year we had 45 in uh, pairs, so that's 90 pieces of art. So from what I was looking at, and we're going to be looking at some more of this stuff, it really, there's a lot of talent here in Sun City, isn't there? There is a lot of talent, and not just in these two clubs. There's so much talent in Sun City, from the music to the crafts, to the sewing, to the photography, and the artists. So we are very blessed to be in this society where we are nourished to use those gifts. You're absolutely right. And you told me that people can also sell their paintings, and some people have already sold their p photography or their pictures already. Yes, things usually, people come, the people who want to really buy are here when the door opens because they want to get first pick. But then people come later, you know, and everybody is interested in different things. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. Well, I'm here in front of this fantastic photo and artist work. And Jim Smith is the photographer, and Jan Urbanic is the artist. 
So how did you come up with this picture? And you tell me, Jim. Okay. Well, um, I was at Beaufort National Cemetery one day, and this uh, the Marine was playing taps at, uh, at the funerals there. And uh, it, it really... It really meant something to me because I have three family members myself who are buried at Beaufort National Cemetery. So, um, so I was I got talking to him between funerals that he was conducting, and and uh, he agreed to let me photograph him. And so I, I wanted to do this with the bugle and everything. And so so um, that's how I got this particular photograph. And Jan, you're interpretation of that is marvelous. Oh, how did you. you how did you come up with this? Well, I came into this a little late because Jim's other partner got sick. So they were looking for another artist and so I had about a month. So I asked Jim, give me some ideas of what you're looking for and Jim said, "Well, I'd like a, a soldier playing taps." I'd like the cemetery, and I'd like a battle scene at the bottom. I said, well, Jim, I'll give you two or three. So that's how I came up with that. And it's interesting because I used a picture of Buford Cemetery for the cemetery piece. You did a fantastic Thank job. You. Thank and in you. one month's time, you did this. Yes. You are a true artist. <laughs> Carol Jackson, the photographer, and Carol Dombrowski, the artist. And Carol, how did you select this picture? How did you and Carol select this picture? Well, actually, um, I gave her several, and I was really pleased because I was late submitting anything, and she was good enough. She already had one person she was working with to pick up the late ones of us, the ones that were tardy to the party, and offered to do it. And when I came over, we looked at uh, several and kind of settled in on this and talked about um, this is just a little lagoon at the corner of one of the intersections here in Sun City. And my initial picture was the colors weren't quite as uh, juiced up as they ended up being, but I love the way Carol interpreted it because the big part of my picture what attracted me to take the picture is the reflections and I think hers just shows like another way the reflections look at a different time when there's not as much um, color brought up into the picture so I'm excited. Okay. And Carol, how did you come about this interpretation? Well, it was a Sun City Lagoon and in our lagoon we all have alligators and egrets and I decided to kind of incorporate that into the into the painting and um, 
and the reflections are what I was focusing on. Well, I'm here with Tom Lair, who is the photographer, and Howard Danzig, who is the artist. So, Tom, you first. How did you come up with the photo? The photo is a photo uh, that I took in Aruba uh, about four years ago. And there's a place right on the sunset that people typically sail their boats right in front of the sunset every day, so you can always wait to see any one of a number of sailboats that'll go right in front of it. It was originally a color photograph, but we decided to put it in black and white. Okay. And Howard, you picked this photo, and well, how did you interpret it? Well, Tom showed me a bunch of photos, and I loved this one, and we decided to do it in black and white. Uh, and this is the hardest fo uh, uh, picture I've ever painted. It's easier to do in colors, because you can hide stuff. You can't hide stuff. But... Uh, it's a fun thing to do, and I don't remember the color photo. It can't be as good as this, because this is really great. And I'm going to vote for you. <laughs> and how long did it take you to paint this, Howard? Forever. I can, I can paint some things in a day. This took days and days and days. I had to change things. I looked at this, and I looked at this, and I said, this is too far, to this, too so soon, too big, too small. And so uh, it took me a long time. Well, I think you did a fantastic job. And Tom, a fantastic photo. Thank you very much. Tom did a perfect job. In fact, I'm going to buy I'm going to buy it from him. Easy to take that photo, but uh, when Howard told me about the challenges artistically with a, with a paint and with acrylics, I was really impressed.
I'm here with Sophia Shade, who is the uh, photographer, and Jane Caprero, who is the artist. Now, Sophia, how did you pick this photo? Well, actually, uh, Jane picked the photo. I took this uh, beautiful uh, red hawk. It took me three hours to photograph him, follow him all over the place, and finally was able to get the shot. Jane saw it on my Facebook page, and she goes, I got to have him. Can I go ahead and, and paint him? So she's the one that picked him. Well, it is truly, truly beautiful. I could see how you could spend three hours trying to get that perfect, perfect shot. And Jane, how did you come up with your interpretation? Well, I changed the sky because I needed something a little bit lighter. When I was painting it, it was coming out a little bit too um, strong. So I had to soften it. So the sky made it a little bit happier. And then I wanted a little bit more different colors with the marsh and have everything blend. So I added some extra color, uh, different colors to the marsh. How long did it take you? It took me a couple of months. <laughs> I can imagine. I can to perfect imagine. it. Thank it you. was, yeah, because I, I, I was measuring and, and working on it, and um, it took a long time. I, I, a lot of it wasn't painting. It was sitting and looking at it, and then fixing and changing and adapting. And, I'm with Linda Moore, Hi. the photographer, mm -hmm. and Cynthia Byers, the artist. And really, you can't tell the difference. You start, oh. Linda. Uh, what is about how the oh. selection came about. Actually, I have to give her the credit. I take pictures. She's the one that picked this picture for the creative vision. So, Cynthia, you did a great job. I can't tell one from the other. How did you, how did you do this, and how did you select this particular one? Well, uh, Linda has lots of gorgeous pictures and lots of birds, and I had chosen three or four of them to think about, and when I got home and was having kind of a stressful day, and I looked at these little squirrels, and they thought, this is going to be relaxing to paint these guys. So that was kind of my first choice. Um, at least when it started, anyway. <laughs> how long does it take you to do something like this? I do not keep track of the time. <laughs> that, that, that would spoil it. <laughs> okay. uh, it does take a bit of time because there's lots of layers with watercolor. And uh, I spend a lot of time just studying the picture before I even start. So I kind of get to know the, the, the subject matter and, and then you just start. <laughs> well, you've achieved number one first place status Thank in you. peers. I mean, did you We're know thrilled. what people making comments no. about it? Yeah, I heard it, but you just can't believe what you hear. You know, I didn't get, I didn't want to get set up and be disappointed. So it's like, <laughs> you know, I sold it and I thought that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Oh. And then when I got a call today to come to the awards ceremony, <laughs> I knew it just, they said, we can't tell you what you want, but just show up. Oh my God, so this was a big surprise. <laughs> oh yeah, sure was. Well, it's not Very surprising nice. because it's absolutely gorgeous and Thank congratulations, you. Thank you so lady, much. on being number one. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We're here with Tom Mills, the photographer, and Nancy Hall, the artist, and this is second placed overall of all the entries in the pairs. Tom, how did you select this wonderful photo? This was a guy who was playing um, the violin on a street corner in Charleston one day, and I, uh, the, the thing that caught my eye about it was that bright red violin, or an, almost an orange red, and he's wearing a sweatshirt, and if you look closely, you can see his cap is real stained and sweaty. And then the, the most interesting thing is these long, beautiful fingers he's using to, to um, uh, play the violin, but his fingernails are absolutely filthy. It looks like he, he came from uh, uh, repairing a car before doing this. So it, it's a lot of contrast. It makes it kind of an interesting street picture. Well, Nancy, how did you get that down and dirty look into your artistry? <laughs> well, it, it was a process. Um, and, and I did try to put those dirty fingernails. And, and the hardest thing for me, and working on the surface of a 19... 2678 record um, was the layers that it took to get those vibrant colors. Um, but I, I came close. <laughs> well, obviously, you came real close. And 
congratulations. This is called Street Music, Street music. and second place overall on the entire event. Congratulations to you both. I'm here with Diane Braden, the photographer and Jan Urbanic, the artist, and your paint, your photo is called? Morning Blush at Fish Hall Park. Okay, and tell us about this photo. Um, it's on the island, and my husband and I like to go there and walk at sunrise. It's a beautiful beach and not quite as populated or busy as some of the others, so it's a, just a favorite place of ours, and I captured this one morning on a walk. And Jan, how did you decide on this photo? Well, Diane was nice enough to pull about seven photos up for me, and this one caught my eye. I love the colors. I like the movement of the line in the sky, so that's how we got it. That's how we chose it. And how long did it take you to do this? Uh, this took me about two months. Two months. Mm -hmm. Well, you work pretty fast. Well, I work, and then I put it down, and then I start up again, so it, it's a whole period of time that lapses. Now what did you have to capture in that? The grass for one thing was a big focal point, the water was another and it was interesting. My son came to visit and he critiqued my work and said, what is that stuff in between the water and the grass? Because he thought it was all land. And it made me look a second time and said, no, that's water. Oh, so I had a lot of critiques along the way. Well, obviously, <laughs> you, 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 you didn't need any critiquing. You did a great job, ladies. Third place in the pairs. We're happy. Beautiful, beautiful work. Congratulations Thank to you. you both. Thank you. I'm here with Sophia Shade, who is number one in the photography category in Creative Visions. Well, Sophia, this is fantastic. I can see why it's number one. Tell us about this beautiful photo. So this um, shoulder hawk, this is a red shoulder hawk. He um, actually flew down and set in a, um, lines, a wire. And, and I'm like, oh my God, I gotta photograph him. And um, it took me three hours to capture this particular shot. Uh, I followed him and followed him and he just started taking off and he let me get cl really close to him and that's why you see this um, motion. I was so close to him, it was unbelievable. And it turned out to be a beautiful shot. And you got the wingspan and you got the greenery in back with the sky up above. I can see why it's number one. So it took you hours to get this one photo and what did you call this photo? So this photo was called Up, Up and Away. Um, as you can tell from the wingspan, he was actually flying away from me um, and he was going up, up and away. And actually uh, the artist came up with the name and my husband said, yep, that's the perfect name for him. So we decided to call him Up, Up and Away. Gee, it's too bad he doesn't know that he came in number one, <laughs> right, Sophia? <laughs> that's right, he's a celebrity. Artist Cynthia Byers was a double award recipient, winning first place in pairs and first place in the artist categories with her painting entitled Nuts About You. Congrats to all.